Welcome to our five minute Bible study today in the book of Romans. Today we're in Romans chapter six and Paul is continuing to talk about the wonder of living by grace. Now we saw last time that Paul says we're saved by grace, not by law. By works of the law, no one can save themselves because we can't live the law perfectly. What the law does is it points us to our need of a savior and the grace that comes in Jesus. But now Paul faced a dilemma in his day in regard to someone who had twisted his teaching, someone who had distorted what it means to live under grace. There were some who said, well, you know, Paul, if we live under grace and not under law, you know, Paul, if where law abounds, grace much more superabounds, maybe these people said with their false teaching, maybe they said it would be best to sin a lot so that grace can abound a lot. Maybe it would mean that since we're not under the law, we can do whatever we please because grace is going to save us anyway. Paul responds to that. He says, when you have that kind of misunderstanding of grace, you've missed the whole point. Here's what he says. What shall we say then? This is the first part of chapter six. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? You see, that's the false teaching. If grace superabounds, why don't we just sin more and let grace abound even more? So some of those false teachers are saying, shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? And Paul responds, by no means. Now the phrase here in the original language is the employment of a double negative. Paul uses two negative terms. He said, no, no, absolutely not. Some translations try to get the meaning by saying, may God forbid such a thing. It's a total misunderstanding of grace. No, no, grace does not give a license to sin. Grace frees us from sin. The wonder of being saved by grace, Paul wants us to understand, is that it changes who we are. He goes on. We are those who have died to sin. So how can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too may live a new life. Paul wants us to understand that when we're saved by grace, that doesn't mean we've got a license to sin as if it could ever mean such a thing. By no means, he says. No, no. When we're saved by grace, we're suddenly raised to a new life in which that old way of sin no longer appeals to us. To live under grace, not under law, does not mean you have license to do whatever you want. To live under grace means that God has made you into a new person. And that this new person wants to do what God desires for you. He says, in truth, when you experience grace, you're baptized with Jesus into his death. That is, you die to the old person you were. And just as you're baptized with him into his death, so you're raised with him into new life. Grace does this. It makes you an entirely new creation. That old person who is trapped in sin is gone. Now suddenly you're a new person entirely in Jesus, a person free from the power of sin over you. You see, grace does so much more than just forgive us of our sins. It does that. But grace also frees us from sin's control over us so that now we can live the righteous life. You see, the law could point us to the righteous life, to a life of holiness, but never give us the power to live it. Grace gives us the power to live that holy life because we've died to the old person and we've been raised to a new person in Jesus. Grace enables us to live free from sin. John Wesley, who was the founder of the Methodist movement, talked about it this way. He said, you know, when you experience the power of the grace over your sin, it does two things. It frees us from the guilt of sin, 
That is, it washes away the stain. It forgives us. But it also frees us from the power of sin. It sets us free so that we no longer have to live under its control. So two things happen to us when we're saved by grace. The guilt of sin is removed because our sins are forgiven. And the power of sin is defeated and it no longer controls us. And we are thus free by grace to live for God. So the idea of grace some, somehow being a license to sin is, is absolutely false, Paul says. It is grace that finally frees us so we don't have to sin anymore. So if before you experienced grace, you were a liar and you told lies all the time, the law told you to tell the truth, but you couldn't stop lying. But now that you've experienced grace, you've been forgiven of all the lies you told, that guilt is washed away, but also grace has made you into a truthful person. Now, by grace, you would rather tell the truth. You can't even conceive of telling a lie. You see, grace sets you free. As you were baptized into Christ in his death, you died with him to the old man you were, and you've been raised to a new life in him, to the new person Christ has made you to be, who is free now to live the righteous life that Christ has called you to. So grace, you see, sets you free to live fully for God. No wonder we sing the hymn, Amazing Grace. It is amazing. It not only forgives our sin, but it frees us from the power of sin. Amen and amen. Hope you have a great day today. I hope you live in the blessings of Christ upon you, and I will see you next time in our next session of our five-minute Bible study in the book of Romans.